planet Earth is the place that we live in the universe, and most people would agree that we're at least semi-comfortable here. But the big question that everyone asks is whether there's another Earth out there for us to live on. That's a bit of a tough question given the size of the universe. It is certainly likely that there's another Earth, but we've not yet found the perfect match that we can live on. However, that doesn't mean that we haven't found a whole bunch of other planets that range from the possibly habitable to the incredibly weird and unusual. So with that in mind, join us as I show you 20 strangest planets ever discovered in the galaxy. Number 20. K218b I'm going to begin with a planet that many scientists have pinned their hopes and dreams on in one form or another. But why is that? Well, because astronomers have finally discovered another Earth. Or at least one of many that could be like Earth in the ways that matter. But what makes the planet known as K218b so special? Well, a few things really. First of all, it's a type of celestial body known as a transiting planet, which means that it passes in front of its star, which is important when it comes to finding planets. The second thing that makes this planet so special is that there's potentially water on it. But why is that so special? Well, as you know, water is the basis of life as we know it, and you'd be surprised how few planets out there have the capability to have water, either on the surface of the planet or within their atmosphere. The planet itself was actually discovered way back in 1999, and now, two decades later, there's proof given that water could be within the atmosphere. But there's more. The position of K218b is perfect because it's the aptly labeled habitat zone when it comes to orbits. I mean, after all, if you're too close to a star, you're going to burn up, and if you're too far away, you're going to freeze. Earth is in the habitable zone of our sun, and K218b is in that same sweet spot. So why are we not rushing to get there yet? Well, it's uh, 124 light years away, that's twice as big, and it's 18 times as dense as our own planet. It's also not clear if there is any kind of life or the potential for life on the planet itself. So while it may be Earth-like, it's not exactly a perfect replica for Earth. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. J1407b. If there's one thing that astronomers love to do, it's use references to planets that we know to describe new ones that we discover. For example, J1407b has been given two nicknames based on its similarities to a planet that you know very well, or at least you should know if you paid attention in school. Anyways, it's been called Saturn on steroids and Super Saturn, depending on who you talk to. And would you like to guess why it's been labeled that? Well, if you said, is it the rings? Well, you would be correct. So how much are these rings? rings on steroids? Glad you asked. First, it's important to remember that Saturn is bigger than Earth, and its rings help to enforce that. But the rings of J1407b are 640 times larger than Saturn's, and that's a whole lot of rings. But if you need some context on how that would measure up to Saturn, if the two randomly swapped places in the universe, the rings of J1407b would be visible from Earth. As in, you could look up into the sky, and you would see those rings. Oh, and the rings have much more mass than Saturn's, and that means that if it were in our solar system, it would probably cause problems with certain other bodies. Speaking of which, it's believed that there's so much mass within these rings that there are actually going to be satellite planets that form from what's inside of them. It'll happen so much over the next few million years that eventually the rings will thin out and then disappear. At present time, it's the only planet outside of our solar system that has a confirmed ring structure structure like Saturn's, but as noted before, just because you've seen it doesn't mean there isn't another one out there. That's why we need to keep on looking out into the vast reaches of space for all the answers that we see. Number 18. Glias 581c 
Now, I'm going to need you to hear me out about this one, because depending on who you talk to, you're either going to find a potentially habitable planet or a literal outer space hellscape that you'd only want to see from the safety of your spacecraft. But first, let's focus on the positive elements. The planet is only 20 light years from Earth, which is 192 trillion kilometers away. So if we were to upgrade our space traveling ways, we could theoretically reach it in a much quicker time frame than many of the other planets in this video. Plus, there's also potential for it to be a life-forming planet because of its position to its own sun, because it too is in the habitable zone. Are you waiting for the shoe to drop? Well, the first bad thing is that the planet is tidally locked, which means that one half of the planet is always facing the sun. Earth rotates on its axis once every 24 hours, which is why every part of the planet has a day and night cycle. However, for this one, it doesn't have that, and because of its tidal locked position, half of the planet is frozen and the other half is burning. But it's also believed that there's a very narrow strip of land right in the middle ground that could house some life, but it's unproven as of yet for very various reasons. Now sadly, it does not get any better from there, as a research study from 2017 would indicate that the atmosphere of the planet is much like Venus, which means that it's a greenhouse planet and something that we couldn't even live in if we did hit the narrow spot where things are either hot or cold. Now it's not the best option out there, but sometimes you just need to look at the extremes alongside with the safe bets in order to get answers and clarity. Number 17. GJ1214B have you ever seen that Kevin Costner movie, Waterworld? If not, it's probably for the best. But uh, I'm referencing that here because it's an apt description of our next planet. GJ1214b is believed to be a planet that's completely consumed by oceans. Now there's no land masses to speak of, only water. That's a lot of water too, as the planet is said to be over twice the size of Earth and seven times as heavy, meaning that that water makes up a lot of the mass for the planet. But there's also a catch to this water, after all, because why wouldn't there be? When it comes to whether it's a uh, water that we see here on Earth, well, technically, no, it's not. Due to GJ1214b's position to its sun, the average temperature on the planet is a very mild 290 degrees Celsius. That means that it's really, really super hot, and the atmosphere is right up there with it. And when you put both the temperature and the pressure together, you get the potential for super fluid water, something that isn't really natural on Earth. So, you can see why so many people found it interesting and want to learn more about it. But now let's ask the obvious question. Could there be life on this water world? Well, nobody can say for certain, and not for the reason you might think. You might feel that the answer is no, because the conditions are not like Earth's. However, Earth does have creatures in the oceans that live near geothermal vents that connect to the Earth's core. As a result, they have to endure temperatures much higher than the average temperature of the planet, and so life could exist in the water if everything holds up. But until we get a closer look, it's just simply going to be difficult to know for sure. Number 16. Glias 436b. Now, you're going to hear several planets that have similar sounding names on this list, but I'll do my best to make them feel special and separate. Glias 436b is from the system that we talked about before, but it has a few things that are different from the last Glias. First, the planet is only 30 light years away, so it'll be more of a trek. Secondly, well, it also apparently breaks the laws of physics. How so? Well, if you look at the size of the planet, it matches up with planets from our solar system like Neptune. However, the big difference is that Neptune is comprised of gas, while Glias 436b is comprised of ice. Now, that might not sound so bad or even odd depending on the situation, but I assure you it is, because Glias 436b also rotates at a distance that is 15 times closer to the Sun than Mercury is to ours. And remember, Mercury is really, really close. And due to that, the temperature of the planet is about 439 degrees Celsius. But wait, didn't you say it was made out of ice? Well, yes I did, and there's the contradiction. The temperature of the planet is well above the melting point for ice, and yet that ice doesn't melt. 
How the heck is it even possible? Well, because of the other force that works on the planet being gravity. You see, the gravity on Glias 436b is so powerful that it compacts that water vapor in the atmosphere into ice and doesn't let it go away. So even though it's burning hot, it cannot melt that ice. The ice is so unique, in fact, that it's been labeled Ice X as a result. And to be clear, this is not a planet that we could ever think of living on, but we're sure that someone would love to study that literal hot ice. Number 15. Cancri E Next up, we have a planet that many people would love to go to for a very altruistic reason. And by altruistic, I mean that it would make a people a ton of money if they went there. That's because this planet is referred to as the Diamond Planet, as in a literal planet that is made up out of diamonds. You can already hear your bank accounts going cha-ching now, can't you? But it does get better because it's only about 40 light years away from us. So again, if we could get our space travel traveling butts in order, we would potentially be able to reach it in good time. Plus, the planet is eight times the size and twice as dense as Earth, which means that there are a lot of diamonds to be had if we could actually make it there. And while we don't have an exact estimate on how much is actually there, it's believed that it's at least one third of the planet that's comprised solely of diamonds. The reason for this massive amount of diamonds is the incredible amounts of carbon that the planet is said to have, along with other materials, and and the incredible heat and pressure that is put on it by the sun. Now, when carbon meets heat and pressure, that's when you get diamonds. It's also a very special thing because not all planets have a high level of carbon, which is why finding another planet like Earth has been difficult at times. So, all we need to do is reach this planet and get rich, right? Well, not exactly. After all, if there is a sudden inflation of materials like diamonds, the cost will end up actually going down. But getting them sporadically and then distributing them all throughout the Earth or whatever colonies that we have by that point, well, that would work just fine. Um, we hope, that is. Number 14. Hat P7b Here's another planet that you might be able to go to and get potentially rich. Luckily for you, there is another one that fits the mold, and it's called Hat P7b. But it's not a diamond planet like the last entry. Oh no, this one has a different hook to get you there. In this case, you would want to go there for the rainfall. What's so good about rainfall, you may ask? Well, it's simple. It rains rubies and sapphires. And you better believe it. Or at least you need to believe that this is the kind of thing that's happening on the planet. You see, in the clouds of the planet, there exists a vaporized conundrum, which is the stuff that makes up rubies and sapphires. So that means that if enough of them were to get together, they could form bigger and bigger ones as they're rained down across the planet. And yes, I do mean across the planet, because the world also has incredibly powerful winds that would easily be able to move these gems all over the place without a whole lot of effort. And so, if we were to find a way to get there and safely land on the surface, we could literally be walking on a treasure trove. But given how violent the planet can be, we definitely want to ensure that we're protected from the storms, devastating winds, and incredibly sharp objects that may or may not be raining down upon us from high. You can't get rich if you die trying, right? Number 13. PSR J1719-1483B Wow! Despite the incredibly long name, I didn't name it by the way, the planet is known as PSR J1719-1483B. It can easily be defined by another metric, it's another one of those diamond planets. Yes, that's right, this is another planet that is arguably completely comprised of diamonds. But there's a much bigger twist with this planet than there was with the previous one. The reason being is that while the last planet made diamonds in the standard way, you know, with heat and pressure, this one is all about the pressure because the planet is orbiting a pulsar. Now, for those of you who don't know, a pulsar is an extremely compact and dense neutron star that is about the size of a large city, and in this case, it's about 19 kilometers wide. 
but it has more density than the stars in our solar system. The planet circles the star so perfectly that if it were any closer, the intense gravity would have ripped it apart without question. But that intense gravity is also what people believe makes diamonds on the planet. Another twist is that the diamond layer only really exists because the rest of the planet was stripped away and fed to the pulsar. And that's why you don't see too many planets around stars like that. Because the destruction is typically very massive. And so, while you may be tempted to visit such a place in order to get rich, you would need to be able to fight the power of that star and also survive the gravity of the planet, which would be anything but easy. Number 12. HD 189733b now, sadly for all of you, I'm finished talking about the gem planets for a little bit, but if you want to see another example of extreme weather out in the galaxy, well, allow me to show you the cutely named HD 189733b. Really has a catch to it now, doesn't it? What gets this planet on the list? Well, due to its atmosphere, which is made up of silicate atoms and particles, when it rains, it literally rains glass. Now, I'm not joking, it's a planet that will rain glass down upon you, but more importantly, it's also one that will rain it down sideways. Are you confused? Well, I will explain, as always. The planet has wind speeds that can top 8,690 kilometers per hour. So, <laughs> imagine that you're on this planet and the winds are already throwing you around like a rag doll, and now you have to worry about glass ripping you to shreds as you get blown away. Just the wind speed alone would be enough to make people nervous about going to the planet, but the the glass part really seals the deal now, doesn't it? This is the kind of thing that makes space exploration both terrifying and exciting at the same time, because we don't always want to see planets that could be a new Earth. We want to see ones that are unique, different, and yes, horrifying. Now, I'm not saying that I want to know more about planets like this, but variety is the spice of life, and that also includes when it comes to planets. Number 11. WASP-12b WASP-12b is a truly unique planet because of its natural ability. That ability is all about absorbing light. You see, the reason that we can find other planets in the solar system and the universe is that a vast majority of them actually reflect light from the various stars, and we can see them as a result of that. However, with WASP-12b, that is not exactly the case. You see, it has an atmosphere and surface layer that absorbs the light from its nearby star. And I'm not talking light. 10 or 20 percent, this planet has an absorption rate of about 94 percent. And so that means that when you look at this planet from a telescope, no matter how powerful that telescope may be, this planet's going to be nearly pitch black against the backdrop of space. Now, typically a planet or a moon has some kind of reflective surface, and that reflective property is known as albedo. The higher the albedo, the more that it reflects. But the heat of the planet is apparently so hot that the albedo is burning burned away, and if you really wanted to, you could rationally call WASP-12b the goth planet because it doesn't want to be seen. Just saying. Number 10. GJ-504b Timing is everything when it comes to these entries, and if you'd like proof of that, well, I just showed you a planet that makes everything look black. And now, we have GJ-504b, which is a pink planet. But is it merely a coloring trick, or is the surface a real nice shade of magenta? Well, as in all things, it is about context. And in this case, the context is that GJ-504b is a relatively newly formed planet, meaning that the planet is burning with a heat that many other planets in the universe don't actually have. And due to this, the heat is causing the surface to appear magenta. But if you were to look closer on the planet, you would actually see that it has a blue tint to it, showing just how much of the sun is augmenting things. This kind of thing really fascinates scientists because it helps to showcase how planets are in their early stages. And so yes, it is a pink planet, but no, it's also not a pink planet. In other words, it's complicated, and we'll simply leave it at that. Number 9. Kepler 10c. Now, I've previously shown you planets that are known as Super Earth because they're a certain size that's bigger than our planet. But with Kepler 10c, I'm going to show you a Mega Earth. 
That's a planet that weighs 17 times as much as Earth and is more than twice as large in size. And so, if we were to be a bit hip with our lingo, this is a literal thick planet, as in thick with two Cs. In fact, it's so thick, yes, I'm going to keep saying that, that scientists honestly aren't sure how it formed. Because they've met dense planets in the past, and dense stars as I've shown you with pulsars, but this opened up a brand new category of planet, and because of that, they're curious as to whether or not there are other mega-Earths out there, because if so, that would indeed change our view of the planets in our universe. Number 8. Ogle 2005 BLG 390LB all right, seriously, who names these planets these things? Like, what is the point of naming a planet something like this? It looks like a barcode or something you'd find in the Dewey Decimal System, and not a planet name at all. Regardless of the crappy title, though, this planet deserves to be on the list because it's a frozen wasteland of a planet, one that if you were to go there, you would likely be frozen nearly instantly. Remember the Magic School Bus episode where they went to Pluto? It's kind of the same thing, except here you would die. The planet is so far from the sun that its temperature is a whopping negative 220 degrees Celsius, so yeah, there's no life happening on the surface. However, some scientists think that the core of the planet could actually be warm enough that the layer surrounding it could support life. That's something to keep in mind. Number 7. PSR B1620 26b I'm not going to rage about this one's name because the last one was much longer, but this one is also an annoying name as well. The reason that it gets on this list isn't because of looks, it's because of age. Earth is estimated to be around 4.5 billion years old, depending on who you might believe. However, this planet, well, it's allegedly 13 billion years old. If that number sounds familiar to you, well, it's because around 14 billion years ago, that's when the Big Bang is said to have happened, and that would mean that this was one of the first planets that formed in the universe, and it still endures to this day. Now, if we were to get the chance to study this planet up close, which is not easy given all the stars around it, we could potentially learn about the beginnings of the universe thanks to the materials that comprise it. Number 6. Kepler 438b Now you might have noticed that many Earth-like planets that have been discovered may look like Earth, but aren't on the same size and scale as Earth. Typically, they can be a whole lot bigger, much more dense, and thus much more problematic. However, with Kepler 438b, that issue is avoided. It's only a little bit bigger than Earth and does live in a spot around a star that is the habitable zone. So, many are wondering if this could actually be a planet that does in fact have life on it. There are some catches to this, though. The star that orbits pours out more sunlight onto the planet than our sun does with Earth, but despite all of that, the average temperature of the planet is much lower than the Earth's at around 3 degrees Celsius. Oh, and it also appears to be a planet that enjoys radiation, and that's problematic as you could guess. Number 5. HD 106906b there are many things that put this planet on the list of strangest planets found, so how about we start with its size? The planet is so massive that it has the mass of about 11 Jupiters, and I'm only getting started. The real kicker with this planet is how long that it takes to orbit its star. I'm talking about 13,538.6 years, just to go around it one single time. Also, it's a young planet, measuring in at about 13 million years old, and despite being new, it really doesn't get out all that much. But because of its size and position, it's yet another planet that calls into question how much we actually know about how planets form and why some are more dense than others. That's why we get to study them, to find out for sure how things happen in space. Number 4. WASP-17b the planet WASP-17b proves that, in every universe, there are planets that are rebels. 
You see, 99% of the planets out in space orbit the sun in the same direction that the sun moves. After all, it's the sun's gravity that locks them in place. But with WASP-17b, it was the first planet to be found with an orbit counter to the sun's movement. Why does it do that, you may ask? Well, nobody really knows, as it's the first of kinds to be discovered. Another quandary with the planet is that it's an incredibly large one, but has half of the mass of Jupiter. And that challenges all conventions about planet forming. Leave it to a rebel to make us wonder why we have to try and lock something down. Number 3. Trey 2b Remember that dark planet that I showed you from earlier? Well, Trey 2b is a planet that's actually darker than that last one, and we can prove it with math. Because the last planet absorbed 94% of the light that was placed upon it, Trey 2b can absorb 99%. That makes it scientifically blacker than coal, and coal is pretty black. What's more, it also has a temperature of more than 1000 degrees Celsius, and so when it does decide to show some color, it tends to be red, not unlike coal. So yeah, that's a pretty dark world, and I'm not going to be heading to that one anytime soon. Number 2. Kepler 78b just how hot can some of these planets be in space? Well, Kepler-78b is so hot that it's actually a lava planet. I'm talking 2,030 degrees Celsius for its temperature, and it's so close to the sun that it's 40 times closer than Mercury. And technically, it is rather Earth-like in its size, which would have been great if it wasn't so close to the sun. It's so close that it orbits about every eight hours or so, and some even feel that it's a planet that shouldn't exist because of how close it is to a star, and yet Yet there it is. The mysteries of space, ladies and gentlemen, they never cease. Number 1. HR 5183b Finally, we have this planet, which is one that also rebels against the natural order of space by having an orbit that is labeled as being eccentric. And what does that mean? Well, according to reports, it would be as if Jupiter had its orbit altered to where it could swap places with Neptune over time due to how elongated the orbit is. Some orbital difference between planets can happen, and we have it in our own solar system at times, but this is a recurring issue that happens with certain gas planets and potentially becomes a wrecking ball in the system itself. We should be grateful that we don't have something this bad in our system as that could cause some serious issues. And we should also be grateful that it's over a hundred light years away. That's all from the realm of outer space and the various planets we've discovered over the years. Some of them are more strange than others, but which of them did you find the most fascinating? Let me know of another planet in space that could easily fit on this list. Leave a comment down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.